Hi there, in this video, I wanna share with you a super fun and powerful exercise for unlocking your creativity and finding your unique voice as an artist. I really hope you give it a try because it is a blast and it's powerful and it works and I want you to have it in your toolbox to use when you need it in the future. The backstory of this is that I started teaching music lessons when I was 19 and I started at some point asking people when they came to me what their real deeper purpose was for seeking out music lessons and wanting to play music in the first place and working with people on finding that center, uncovering that space that is causing them to want to work on music and be creative in the first place. And I would ask these questions over and over again because I didn't want to just give people scales and exercises and the, the kind of musical technical stuff without knowing first what someone's internal drive is and what their end game is. Naturally, a lot of my students want it to be artists and not just guitarists, right? So we want it to use the guitar to be creative and find a deeper sense of meaning and connection and these things that self-expression brings for us. So I not only was helping people work on learning the technical elements of guitar, but working on help them, helping them feel fulfilled creatively and artistically and kind of keeping a North Star in mind as we work on the day-to-day -day stuff, really seeing the bigger picture, which I, I believe makes all the difference when we're showing up every day, trying to get better at something when we really feel how powerful it is that we can use those skills for something that brings us deeper fulfillment and meaning. So over time working with people in this way, I witnessed many, many times over seeing people who were unsure and uncertain and insecure about making something creative to totally expressing themselves freely and being confident and putting themselves out there. And every single time it just it still does. It, it moves me and, and I find it just amazing to witness. And so that's why I'm sharing this kind of stuff with you today. So I have a lot of tips and tricks and exercises and tactics for this world of, of crea internal creative work. This one today is called Make Something That Sucks. So the primary obstacle that holds anybody back any of us from making something awesome is of course the fear that it won't be awesome. Being willing to make something that sucks is the golden ticket to making something awesome, to making anything ever, really. There's no way around it. We have to get used to this idea and we have to be totally okay with making something that we think is not good. Without that willingness, of course, nothing happens. And we've all been there just doing nothing because it's very scary to do something. But with that willingness, really being willing to do that, then we can take risks. And it, it is a risk in the first place, but we, innovation starts to become possible. The vulnerable parts of us can start to be accessed. The parts that we might not even know it, but we're guarding them. And those are the things underneath that want to have a voice. Those are the things for any of us that wake up wanting to be creative. It's like those things way down there that are wanting to get out, right? We don't just want to sound like someone else or make something that looks like something else someone, some, someone else made. We want to make something that is, that is us and that communicates something. So if, big if, we can feel okay with making something that we think is just garbage, it's like having a creativity superpower. It is a superpower. And it's the power to tap into that state that is very childlike, that is playful, that's operating from a place of curiosity and not caring about the outcomes. All easier said than done, right? But this is what we're going for. So of course we've experienced this because if we didn't, we wouldn't be hooked on wanting to replicate it, on wanting to feel that, on wanting to continue to pursue being creative in the first place. So it happens, this state, this magical feeling of flow, but it seems to operate on its own terms. It comes and goes whenever it wants to, it's not really up to us. That's how it seems anyway. So the question is, is this ability possible to control? Can we get ourselves into that state? Can we really 
turn on being okay with letting our ego, big headed, know it all perfectionist selves make something that might turn out our little art babies turn out shoddy and amateur and sloppy and uh, whatever your personal self-criticism is insert there. So it's not easy, but it is a skill that we can cultivate and strengthen. We can indeed practice and develop this ability, this skill by working on making something that sucks on purpose, something that's lame, something junky, something stupid on purpose. And it's really uncomfortable at first, but it turns out to be extremely fun, extremely freeing, and just a great joy. So here's how to go about it. Start creating something in your medium, in your domain, what you want to be doing, what you dream about wanting to make, start creating something and do it just for the creating only. Easier said than done, but do this by just, you're not going to keep it. You're not going to record it. You're not going to show it to someone. You're not going to send it anywhere. Uh, you're not going to even review it yourself, right? So just try to remove all of that and just start creating just for the moment. So I think we can all do that just fine, but it's when we start to care that things get a little dicey. So as soon as you start to care, and you will, and caring means, ooh, maybe this is good. Ooh, maybe I'm going to send this to a publication. Oh, I'm gonna show all my friends, I'm gonna post this on Instagram, right? As soon as you start to care and, and you attach yourself to it, make a choice, make a creative choice that is freaking ridiculous. Do something absurd. Make a choice you wouldn't have made in the process, in the creativity. So each time you start to get attached to it and you start caring, we want to do something that is destructive so you start doubting that caring. So if you're doing some perfect charcoal sketch of a face and you start, oh, this is this is pretty good. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good at drawing. This is my calling. I'm going to share it with everyone. Do something that just doesn't make sense. Pour some pink paint on it. If I'm writing a lyric, I might use some embarrassingly crass word or something like that. You know, something that shuts down that like, I don't know if I'd be proud of this now. I'm just, and, and, and unlocks the absolute playfulness, right? Being silly is really a helpful, helpful part. Each time you make a bold, bold move like this, you just reset, you reset your intentions and you remove that pressure that the world is putting on us. That is always there. That, that pressure of like, you better be good. You know, everybody else's stuff is good. And, uh, you should be embarrassed if, if you're not already good at this thing, you shouldn't do it at all. You know, all of these very toxic, very limiting, very unfortunate, uh, paradigms that are affecting us all the time as people that want to genuinely be creative. So here's the catch. These absurd moves, these creative embellishments that you just wouldn't have done actually ironically make us care more because it's so refreshing. It's that childlike thing, right? It's like, because you don't care, it actually turns, you'll have this moment of, like, oh, I'm going to do this ugly thing now because, okay, I'm following the exercise, make something that sucks. This is what Jared said to do. Um, and so you'll do something you never would have done. And then one of the reactions, not every time, but this is totally what happens. Like, oh my gosh, that's profound. Oh my gosh, maybe I'm a genius actually. Like, look at how, look at how creative. Have you ever seen someone someone's work or heard someone's work and, and just the, like, how did they think of that? Right. You'll start to feel that way about what you did because you did something so out there and it doesn't have to be out there in like an avant-garde way, but it's just not what you would have done. So of course this is built into the exercise because as soon as you care, as soon as you think it's genius, as soon as you like, Oh, maybe that's actually pretty nice. You have to do another one because you start caring and you say, Oh, maybe I do want to share this. Nope. Do something else. It creates this cycle of, again and again and again and it rockets us into that spirited inventiveness that we usually are lacking when we try to make something that 
is going to be shared from the beginning. That is supposed to be good from the beginning. I hope I'm good. I hope people like this. I hope they like me. So we're constantly removing that desire to be accepted. And this is hardwired. This is baked into us. So don't fight it in a way where we should feel bad for wanting to be accepted. Being accepted is far more important for our survival. It is in our evolution than making something that we feel expresses ourselves so nicely. We need, we need acceptance. We need to be accepted by people. So we don't want to fight that um, as an evolutionary instinct. But this fun exercise puts that aside and said, that's not what this is about right now. You know, scoot it with the broom. You know, it keeps coming out. It keeps coming in and you kick it out every time. So here's what's happening, though. The moves you make that I'm saying are ridiculous and absurd and, and destructive and, and just, you know, resets us. You still are making a choice to do those. You still are doing something that is still creative. You cannot help but have your taste be used in that process, right? That is still you. So what's happening is that these nether regions of our taste and our creativity and these vulnerable things that we never would have uncovered if we thought people needed to like it start to unsurface we start to dust the cobwebs off of i call them the cobwebs of uncertainty right there's these things hiding in the corners that you wouldn't have let out you wouldn't have shined the light on um, because you're just not sure it's going to be accepted or it's going to be good or you're going to get that record deal or that publishing deal or whatever your thing is Right. But this exercise lets let's like, oh, yeah, come on out. But we don't think of it as us. We think of it as like, let me do something dumb. Let me do something crappy. And you still have to make a choice of what that crappy thing is. So if I was drawing a picture, it's all perfectly nice. I might just put a big dumb stamp on it or uh, a black square in front of <laughs> something else that I just spent time on or something, you know, and that is still an aesthetic preference of some kind. So there's still you in it. So we're uncovering something that is not fake, but real. And don't think of it this way from the beginning. If you think of it as, let me find something so real, it's the opposite of what we're trying to do, right? It's, it, it's this hack. It's a trick. We want to practice feeling like it's safe to take a risk. We want to practice feeling like it's safe to use those twists and turns that we have available to us, but we usually don't use them. This is basically daring, daring to be who you are. Daring to be authentic and genuine. Now, when I put it that way, it seems all scary again. So we cannot let that hang us up. Just follow the tactic and have fun with it. And we have to really, really honestly, really honestly, two things. One, really honestly approach it as this is supposed to suck. This is supposed to be something I'm never, I wouldn't ever think of showing someone, of, of releasing or whatever. Right? You really have to approach it that way, honestly. And it's no one has to see it. No one has to see it and you could throw it away. The other thing is we have to be honest with ourselves when we start to care. And when you notice you start to care, do something absurd. I've seen this work over and over and over again with myself and with students that I've worked with. And again, and we don't, we have these two aw awarenesses happening. You might think of the childlike naive side and then the side that's kind of controlling it and doing this exercise on purpose because we want to, we actually do want to make cool stuff. But the end result is that it rarely ever, rarely ever does the outcome end up being something that we're actually not happy with. But the most, 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 most important thing here is that we are just at the gym working out. In other words, we're working on a muscle that has atrophied. We're working on an ability that we are not used to using. So this particular piece, no, it's not, you're not going to use it, right? But you're working on exercising that atrophied muscle, that creative ability to access this weirdness, if you will, or whatever you might want to call it. So next time when the stakes are higher, 
when you actually do care and that's okay and we do care you get a commission or something and you need to actually produce something or you, you you're part of an accountability club and it, it you're going to make something and people are going to see it or whatever it might be this exercise allows us to feel like it's safe to pull a little bit of that authenticity and or weirdness and or risk taking and or playfulness into something that we're that is that we're really thinking of as serious we need to have that we need to have that we need to feel like it's going to be okay to make those moves so don't take my word for it see for yourself try it set out to make something lousy on purpose in this way with this exercise and feel the burden lift feel that heaviness of our artistic identities or whatever we're carrying baggage we're carrying around with us feel it go away and you remember you don't have to show it to anyone else but by the end of the exercise it's quite possible that you'll want to even more so than the stuff you make with the purpose of showing it to people so that's it that's how it works super fun super exciting super inspiring to think about this stuff and get amped up and and explore and go towards the depth of what matters to us in terms of our creativity and our art yes i started this as a guitar lesson channel but this stuff is in my blood and i can't help but talk about it and like i said even in my guitar lessons for almost two decades uh i get the most excited about the strategy and the creativity and the coaching uh and artistic guidance and so i'm experimenting with that here if you thought it was valuable please let me know and i will see you in another video next week